Good evening and welcome to News Review. King Juan Carlos of Spain is to abdicate. His decision was announced on Monday by Prime Minister Mariano Rajoy, who convened an extraordinary council of ministers to start the process by which Crown Prince Felipe will succeed his father. In a televised address to the nation, the king said the time had come to make way for a younger generation with the energy and determination to see through the reforms that Spain requires right now and face with renewed intensity the challenges of tomorrow. He said his son, Prince Felipe, has the maturity, expertise and sense of responsibility required to take on the functions of head of state and start a new chapter of hope for Spain. Don Juan Carlos revealed that he took his decision to abdicate on his 76th birthday last January. News of the king's decision was broken by the Prime Minister Mariano Rajoy earlier in the day. Mr Rajoy explained that under the provisions of the Constitution, the abdication must be sanctioned by the Cortes, and he said he was confident this would happen very soon. The Prime Minister paid tribute to the king for his key role in upholding democracy after the death of General Franco and the subsequent attempted military coup in 1981. Meanwhile, the Gibraltar government credited King Juan Carlos with contributing immensely to establishing parliamentary democracy in Spain after 40 years of fascist totalitarianism. It said the king has carved for himself a place in history by leading his country through an extremely difficult period of transition. In respect of Gibraltar, number six convent place said the king will be remembered for his call when he addressed the United Nations General Assembly for all parties involved to seek imaginative solutions in keeping with the times in which we live. The government sent its respects and those of the people of Gibraltar to King Juan Carlos on his retirement and also wished the future king, Don Felipe de Bourbon, a successful future in the hugely demanding task that awaits him. It's assured him of all respect for his role in the context of the Spanish constitution. Now, Spain has claimed that it's fully complying with the European Commission's frontier recommendations and that the queues that sometimes build up are in no way politically motivated. That's what Spanish Foreign Minister José Manuel García Margallo told the EU's Home Affairs Commissioner Cecilia Malmström, who'd been in Madrid this week for a series of meetings. Mr. Margallo claimed the frontier controls are in place because of significant smuggling activity and are necessary because Gibraltar is not in the EU's Schengen area. He gave Mrs. Malmström details of the steps the Spanish government is supposedly taking to comply with the recommendations made by the EC following its familiarization visit to the frontier last year. The minister said special attention was being paid to the problems experienced by Spanish workers in Gibraltar. Regarding the African migrant situation, Mr. Margallo suggested this is an EU rather than a national problem, for which Mediterranean countries should receive political, legislative and financial help. Meanwhile, the UK government will be filing another official complaint in Madrid after the latest illegal incursion into British Gibraltar territorial waters by the Spanish Navy. The 90-metre-long patrol boat Infanta Cristina entered Gibraltar waters on the east side of the rock on Thursday. Although English is the language of the sea, when contacted by the Royal Navy, the Spanish Navy vessel responded in Spanish that she was in Spanish waters. She was escorted by HMS Sabre until she exited Gibraltar waters south of Europa Point. A source close to the convent said the Infanta Cristina changed her course a number of times while in British Gibraltar territorial waters. The incident has been recorded as an affront to British sovereignty. A fire involving eight motorbikes and a car is being treated as a suspect arson. The incident on transport lane started in the early hours of Saturday morning, with the City Fire Brigade responding after it was reported to the Royal Gibraltar Police a little after three. This CCTV footage obtained by GBC shows how two appliances were used to tackle the blaze, which was put out in around 12 minutes. No injuries were reported, but damage to the vehicles was extensive. Surrounding properties also suffered slight external damage.
The Royal Gibraltar Police is appealing for witnesses. Officers are keen to speak to a man who was in the area at the time, and the CCTV footage taken on Saturday morning has been posted on the RGP's YouTube channel. Anyone with information should contact Newmore House Police Station on 200 500. The leader of the opposition told an audience at the University of Haen that both sides of the border must concentrate on what unites them rather than divides them in order to create a true spirit of dialogue and cooperation. Daniel Feetum, addressing businessmen and academics who form part of the Real Sociedad Económica de Jaén, warned against nationalistic tendencies and urged for dialogue outside the red lines. Jonathan Sacramento asked him what he meant by this. Well, what I mean is that Gibraltar has its own red lines in relation to sovereignty, jurisdiction and control of our land, our airspace and our waters. And indeed, Spain has their own red lines. But in between those red lines, there's a political space available for both sides to sit down and with will, uh, concentrating always in what is possible and what unites us rather than what divides us, a lot could be achieved for the benefit of citizens on both sides of the, of the border. Because at the end of the day, Gibraltar and El Campo are in a symbiotic relationship. I mean, you know, we are dependent on El Campo for labour, they are dependent for jobs and, uh, and indeed, they're also dependent for Gibraltarian custom that comes through, that comes, uh, through the border, you know, restaurants and businesses there. And so, really, what we ought to be concentrating is on how we can improve the lives of people by reaching positive agreements, as indeed we did in the Cordova Agreements. You spoke about nationalistic tendencies getting in the way of cross-border relations. Is this perhaps a veiled reference to the way the Gibraltar government has been conducting international affairs? No, it's, uh, it, w what I said in relation to that is that, look, it's very difficult for my message uh, to resonate at a time when there are heightened levels of nationalism on both sides of, of the border. But it's at times like this, difficult times like this, that people like me have got to stand up and be countered. There's no point talking about dialogue when the going is easy. It's when the going is tough that you've got to stand up and be counted. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the main messages, not only at this one but in the other uh, six that I've, been, that I've been at, is that this, the politics of the, the Pepe government, which is a politics of imposing punishments of Gibraltar, actually affects their own people more than it affects Gibraltar. Because at the end of the day, you know, I've got a choice whether I cross the frontier or not. But a Spanish labourer that works in Gibraltar has to come into Gibraltar in order to earn his crust. In the same way as there are many, many businesses in El Campo which are really, really suffering as a consequence of uh, the, 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 the problems at the border. We've got our own problems, absolutely, we've got our own problems. But the point to make, which resonates in Spain, is actually it's affecting your own people too. Part of your discourse was uh, to give the lie to uh, some of the references that are made about Gibraltar and the Spanish media. Uh, is this uh, something that you feel will resonate across uh, wider Spanish society? Uh, absolutely. I mean, I think it's really, really important. You know, I believe in, in, in talking to people in a really in a calm way, by using intelligence, by using reasoning. You know, one of the points that I make, for example, is that in 2007 you had an IMF uh, a report on Gibraltar that actually gave Gibraltar a better score in many areas in Spain and the United Kingdom. The man that was actually heading the IMF at the time in 2007 was Rodrigo Rato, a very distinguished uh, Spanish politician. So, you know, that obviously has an, an impact in the same way as, you know, I point out that uh, we were one of the first jurisdictions to uh, transpose in Gibraltar the third directive of money laundering. Whereas Spain, there were infraction proceedings in relation to Spain for non-imposition of that very same directive. I also talk about the exchange of information and the fact that Gibraltar has signed 27 agreements for exchange of tax information. That we've asked Spain to sign an agreement with Gibraltar, but that Spain has refused. You know, those are arguments which are incontrovertible arguments. They, they, they will resonate with thinking people. You're never going to be able to persuade the person that just simply says Gibraltar Español and I'm not interested in anything else. But there are many people in, in, in Spain 
who are reasonable thinking people, and those are the people that we need to be reaching. In preparation for your talk, there was a degree of cooperation between yourself and the Gibraltar government. They gave you some information, I believe. Uh, is this uh, perhaps a side of the relationship between government and opposition that we don't see? We often see, for example, you guys locking horns in Parliament. Well, you know that part of my political philosophy and uh, my view is that the Chief Minister of Gibraltar and the leader of the opposition should get together to try and agree a common message that we can take to Spain. And, you know, we can divide speaking engagements between myself and, and, and the Chief Minister. But one message, it may not have an effect uh, in the short term, but over a period of 20, 30 years, if we can actually get every single subsequent Chief Minister and Leader of the Opposition to do exactly the same, well, over a period of time, it might have an effect. It might have an effect. Now, this time round, uh, I spoke to Albert Isola, and I, and I asked... Uh, for, for his help in relation to information about exchanges of tax information on, uh, uh, between ourselves and other jurisdictions, and I'm very grateful for the help that he has provided, yes. The Gibraltar Senior National Squad recorded its first international victory since being admitted as a UEFA member. They beat Malta on Wednesday by a goal to nil in the friendly played in the Algarve, Portugal. The Lincoln forward, Kyle Casiado, scored in the 66th minute to clinch victory. Thousands watched GBC nervously as Gibraltar held on during five minutes of injury time before they could celebrate the memorable win. Manager Alan Buller was given the bumps by his ecstatic players, just as he was when they were granted UEFA status a year ago. The win will buoy Gibraltar's footballers ahead of their qualifying campaign for Euro 2016. They've been drawn in the same group as Germany, Poland, Georgia, Republic of Ireland and Scotland. Competitive matches begin in September. And we'll be back with more of this week's news after the break. Gibraltar is the proud home of the Barbary macaque, the only free-living primate in Europe. While these animals remain in their natural habitat, they are an asset to Gibraltar and its wildlife. But when they come down into residential areas, well, let's say being responsible citizens isn't exactly part of their nature. They have a natural tendency to forage and can easily find food in everyday refuse. The government is doing its bit by building bin holding areas and bins that are monkey proof. But if people don't use these facilities and leave the rubbish out in the open, this amounts to inviting macaques to a banquet right on our doorstep. And because it is in our nature to be responsible citizens, we must contribute to solving the pest problem by disposing of our rubbish correctly. If we dispose of our rubbish in the right areas at the right times, our residential areas will remain clean and pest-free. And the monkeys will stay where they belong. Stop the monkeys invading your space. Put your rubbish in its place. <laughs> 